smell Walmart. Mm. I see it. That's why I stopped. Oh, it's the last. Very sadly, this may be the last of this plant you'll ever see. It's called epizote. Used to be very common. It comes from Mexico. I just came to learn. I just wanted to see what was edible, what wasn't in a place in an urban environment. I'm a banker, so so not not farming or foraging at all. I never knew any of these plants you could eat. If I'm ever stranded somewhere, now I know what to actually eat. He took us into the back bushes. He picked berries, he picked flowers, he looked at worms. We were a big group, maybe about 25 people. He lost some of them because he went on and on and on and on. But it was a beautiful day and I learned so much and I was so excited by his love of what he does. We are both college professors teaching a chemistry course based on cooking. We thought we can gather some course material. Foraging is a gateway drug into environmental awareness. Uh, you get more in touch with the environment and with the ecosystems. We can't protect the ecosystems out of ignorance. I started doing foraging tours in April of 1982. The name Wild Man came into my head while I was meditating, but I didn't have the hat and I didn't have the beard and people kept saying, you know Brill, you don't look like a wild man. You don't look like a wild man at all. So I went to the Army Navy store, I bought the hat, I grew the beard, and now people say, you know wild man, you look just like I thought you were going to look. I like the fact that his daughter and, and, and Wild Man make a full team. They're, they're very knowledgeable and it's, it's a good experience. I knew all the plants when I was six years old. I could find them. I helped people on the tours find them. Okay, come on over. We have something you've all been itching to learn about. Mm -hmm.